chess shop, video number two. I'm going to show here some Shatar sets. That's the chess of Mongolia. These sets are very similar in certain ways, but you'll see some interesting differences. Each one I'll spend about two minutes on, except the last set I'll spend a full ten minutes because it's so interesting. This bilingual booklet in Italian and English by Rudolfo Pozzi is of great interest to collectors. I refer to it often as I learn about these sets. When I sell these sets, I always include this, my own booklet, which shows the traditional rules of the game, a little different from the standard rules we use nowadays, although the standard rules are most, most often used in modern Mongolia. This first set has a yak's wool board and has the typical camels as bishops and, in this case, rooks as tents. It's boys against girls with girl pawns on one side, boy pawns on the other side. These are typically made for export. The board is just nine and a half inches across and the king stands just short of one and a half inches. Here's another one with similar figures, although here the pawns are wrestlers, which is a very important sport in Mongol tradition. The other pieces are typical. You see the uh, kings and queens are a little different on the two sides, and they do have the bishops as camels and uh, rooks as tents. This is the same size as the first set. Queens are got in a very elaborate headdress. I'm sorry about the focus there. These sets are made of clay and painted in great detail. This is different here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten squares on each side of the board, making a hundred square board. This is Hia Shatar. It's named for Hia, the piece which is essentially like a bodyguard, added to the regular lineup of pieces. Nowadays, the game is played much like modern chess, but with the additional Hia piece which protects the king. Of the sets that I'm showing you, this is the only one that I have more than one of. They're made in molds which were created from an actual Hia Shatar set made in Mongolia hand-carved. You see that the pieces are different on the two sides. These are the two kings I'm showing you right now. Little differences on the tops. Uh, these are the Hia pieces. Each one is different. And uh, these are the lions and their pawns. The lion is the queen. The pawn is considered the offspring of the queen. And you'll see that the tails are characteristic of the two types of tails used in the opposing queens in typical sets. These pieces are felted on the bottoms. Um, they're made of a very strong gypsum, painted and antiqued to give them the, uh, the dark areas that allow the form to show through. They're actually more substantial and heavier than the original pieces since they're made of the stone material. This board is just over 15 inches on each side. It's made of MDF and the king is just about two inches high. Now let me show you another set that comes straight from Mongolia. This is a composite set. Some of the pieces are made with great care. Some of them are made rather quickly. Some are very old. Some are not so old. And they are um, from several sets. We don't know exactly how many. But this is typical of Mongol sets. They will be used for many years, generation after generation. Pieces will be replaced. Sets will be cobbled together. Um, pieces will be repaired, pieces will be refinished over the generations. And you see, here's a newly finished piece, the uh, camel. You'll see that this one set actually represents a great breadth of the Mongolian chess tradition. That horse is uh, rather small. This horse, on the other hand, is a good size and older. It's a real mix here. Oh, this is the uh, wheel, the traditional rook form although you see the other rooks are vehicles. Uh, there's another one of the wheel type things, but yet a different style. So here's one of those quickly carved horses, or it's still pretty nice, and one of the finished um, repainted camels. So what we finally have is a very interesting set, a sort of mini museum of Mongol carving, if you will, even has these round headed pawns on one side, and then actually a mixture of pawns on the other side. Here are the various pieces. Some really are very finely carved. Some are very old. 
um, some show unusual character. There's a rabbit. There's other types of animals, a tiny black rabbit. There's really a mixture of pieces even among the pawns here. And um, here, let's see this one a little closer. So very interesting. Here's some elaborate carving on the back of this one king. And the front of him is kind of worn out. The back of this king, though, it has no carving, but a very interesting front. The whole thing really makes quite a set. You can actually play on it, but um, it's a lot to see, a lot to enjoy. Just as a Mongolian set, it comes with this bag. I believe this is made of silk, and it's got the traditional Mongolian designs. The next set I'll show you is much more complete. It's a rather small set. All very nicely carved. We're going to look at each of the pieces uh, more or less. You can see there are green bases on one side and brown bases on the other side. Uh, the kings typically are a little bit different from one side to the other. And uh, these are about two inches tall. Although you'll notice that the pieces in general are quite small. You see them in, in my fingers there. So every piece is, is well carved. They're pretty well preserved. Here's the lion dog. Queen of the Mongolian set, the pawns are said to be her offspring, which gives reason for their promotion at the end of the board. Um, here's the various pieces. The rook is a lotus flower, apparently, and it's a little different on the other side of the board, too. Notice these are the lion dog uh, pawns with their tails up. Um, the front ones have big bushy tails. Here's the uh, lotus flower on this side, a little different. and. Uh, and then, then each of the pieces, we get a good view here of the the lion dog's face. This is the kind with a big bushy tail, um, as often differentiates it from the, the one across the board. A uh, very nice typical set, very evenly worn. You can see where all the paint used to be. You can see remnants of the paint. This one pawn was added, um, although the uh, the other seven are the same. This pawn is a little special, as sometimes happens. It's the queen's pawn, and she's considered a little bit special um, because she's the, I guess, the chief offspring of her mom, the queen. A very good set altogether, well preserved, with just that one replacement pawn, which is typical, but not too excessive. And it really shows the history of the game, it shows that it's been used, it's probably been in the family for quite a long time, has seen hundreds, maybe thousands of games, and yet has remained relatively intact. We keep this in the orange bag, and let's go on to another set. Now this comes in a special box, which is made and hand-painted in Mongolia. I'm going to show you all the sides of it, top and bottom. It shows typical Mongol designs. Now this one is a bit unusual. It's actually been very meticulously restored by a fine wood carving artist here in the United States. The artist took the original remnants of color and design and repainted it using those same colors and putting the paint in the same places. So you have very much what this set was like when it was first made and first painted all freshly painted again. So the original set does come from Mongolia. This is from Mongolia, but it has been restored. It makes a really beautiful set and brings out aspects of the Mongolian design that is not so easily seen in sets that are very worn down. And you see they are very typical Mongol pieces. They're all in very good condition. The painting is done very exactly. It's a very fine artist who has uh, reconditioned these. The paint is very fresh on these, so you can see it looks essentially new, although, as I was saying, the original set is very old. Now here's the queen and her offspring, the pawn. You can see the similarities. They're showing their teeth there, especially the queen shows her teeth. Here's the other set on the other side. You've got the uh, green bases here, and as usually happens, the pieces all have a slightly different decor. Notice that this side, with the tails that go up, the narrow tails, has a different color, a different type of beast. Even the camels are a different color, although 
they're all this Bactrian type. These have the humps falling from side to side, which is typical of a camel that has been going for a long time without water. And a different type of horses. Notice the manes are very short in this one. And also trucks. Very common for Mongol sets made within the last hundred years to have trucks as the understood vehicle. Here's the mother queen next to one of her pawns. And you see how they resemble each other, both in color and in design. Most notably the tail. And all of these have tails like that, although they're not exactly the same. Some are more curled. Each one is individually carved and shows individual workmanship. The kings of this set are similar to the others, about two inches tall. I just like to point out that there's a little damage to the edge of the top of the uh, case here but that does not prevent it from closing correctly. It's still got enough intact. This side is fine. And uh, yeah, it closes very well still. A beautiful original case. This was not redone. The original paint is on the case anyway. And as you see, it held up very well. Okay, now, before I get on to the most amazing Mongolian chess set I've ever seen, let me show you this other very beautiful restored one. Also this comes with an original box. The box is not restored but shows the original traditional design painting. It's got the sliding top box. So all goes together very nicely. And you'll see that these pieces are also restored but they're restored in a bit more detail. And they're also antiqued. That is, after they were repainted, they were sort of smudged a little bit just to give it a little more texture, a little more feel of the original pieces. You notice that the two kings are considerably different from each other. This one has a little bowl or a gong next to him. And uh, look at the detail on these, the queens. Detailed uh, all around with their um, collars and their teeth showing, their eyes. The horses are very beautifully carved. All in all, this is similar to the set we just saw, but a little bit better. The uh, camels here, their faces are maybe a little bit worn before they were repainted. So um, that's a little unusual, but um, it's because they are actually made from rather old pieces. Here's the queen on the opposing side. And uh, you see it's got the spots on it. Very nicely carved. Let's see what else we have in here. The rooks here are sort of train cars. You'll notice they're similar on the two sides. Um, one side has actually been reconstructed. Uh, when this set was restored, the rooks, the original rooks on one side were missing or damaged. So you'll see that the restored pieces, the newly made ones, are very much practically identical to the uh, originals. And this whole set just works together very well. Here they are all lined up with all of the traditional pieces, train cars as rooks. Um, I believe it is the ones in front with the green bases that were remade. But everything really looking, looking beautiful, excellently restored, and a marvelous example of a Mongolian set. Here's a close-up of the pawns. Interesting uh, that one pawn is a slightly different design. Um, I wonder if it was originally added at a later date and then uh, restored along with all the rest so it flows in very nicely. These are the side where the tails are large, uh, thick, coming up on the back. And uh, let's just look at those again get a good look at everything. Notice the central pawn is the queen's special pawn, a little bit larger than the others. Really one of the most beautiful sets. A very nice touch here. The inside of the box is signed in the traditional Mongolian script. And I'm sorry to say I cannot tell you what that means. It's a very foreign type of scripture. And here, uh, once again, like most of the pieces I'm showing you today, the king is almost two inches tall, and here it is uh, about one and a quarter inches across on the bottom. The lion um, queen is 
a little, just a little over one and a half inches across. Um, give you an idea how big these pieces are and what size of a board they would fit on. This set is by far the finest carved object I have ever handled. I hope I can show you by this video just how fine it is. The focus is a little bit iffy sometimes, so I'm going to go over every piece, uh, hold it a little closer, a little further, really try to get that autofocus to zoom into it. And uh, this is the queen, by the way. This is a set of the pastoral design. The pieces are based on everyday life. They're not so much shaped to be warriors and fighters or even what became the most common traditional forms. They're the workers out in the fields. They're the herdsmen. They're real representations of the people who are actually playing these games. Now this set, um, according to Potsy, the pastoral design is the oldest of the designs. The older sets tend to be pastoral, although we have no actual indication of when these were made. They're obviously very well cared for. They're not just thrown around and played with game after game like those other sets. This was made to be a work of art, and indeed it is. Look, this is the rook, which is a cart, but look, it's got the ox very carefully carved. It's got every one of the spokes carved in. The texture of the material that it's carrying is carved into it. I'm showing you every single one of these pieces because every single one is a very meticulous work of art. This is the other piece. You'll notice that one side of the um, pieces is carved in this reddish wood with some white going through it. The other side is carved in a darker uh, brown wood like this one. This is the, uh, the other side. And uh, here's the camel. The camel is the tradition in virtually all Mongolian sets. But just look at how carefully this is carved, how the legs are carved. Here, I'll show you another, what have I got here? Now, here we go. This buffalo looks, looks like a bison. The other one looks like a, more of a water buffalo. This one is the queen, uh, quite different from the lion dog we see in most of the more recent sets. Um, here is the rook on the other side. These are harnessed up on their yokes. They're carrying something that looks more like logs whereas the others seem to be carrying grain, although they were not connected to their um, harnesses. The horses, you know, everybody loves horses, and these horses are just beautifully elegant. Um, I can't say enough about the carving, but I would really like you to see how each piece is carved individually by a truly masterful carving hand. This set is uh, very well preserved. Um, I'll show you. I found one tiny uh, imperfection uh, chipping on one of the horns of one of the pieces. I'll show it to you. But other than that, uh, look carefully because I have not found any other imperfections. This was obviously just put away, put on display, preserved way back in deep, careful storage, and miraculously has come to us in this amazing condition. And this is the other king, by the way. You remember the other was riding a camel. This one's riding a horse, showing you the difference in the tribes, the clans that are uh, going against each other. Although, as I said, in the pastoral setting, the competition is very easy going. Here's the one with the redwood again, where you can see the, uh, the white showing on the front of the camel's face. Yeah, and the other red camel with a little bit of white showing on the back side. Beautiful Bactrian camels. And what's this one here? Ah, oh, yes, the other rook on the gray, dark brown side. Each piece is just very carefully done. There's no skimping in this set. Uh, even the pawns, as you'll see, are each one carved individually. Here's one of them. They all have their own character. They are goats on one side. I believe they're sheep on the other side. Let's see, what do we have here? One of the horses. 
Um, I can't say enough about these horses. They're strong, they're elegant, and just beautifully carved. And I'll show you the other horse. And once again, every one of these has its own character. Every pawn in the lineup is going to be facing a little different way, turning its head differently. Some will be eating, some will be looking up, some will be reaching around to scratch the bugs on their back. Each one shows what it is. Now these are the, the goats on the one side. And then there are the ones with the horns and the ones, you know, uh, that are maybe younger or um, a different point in life. There's uh, the sheep on one side. Um, let's see what we have here. Another goat. You can see their little beards. Just beautifully, meticulously, perfectly carved. Here's that one goat where the horn is just a little bit shorter on one side. Apparently that is chipped. And uh, that's it as far as imperfections. Now that could be easily remedied by uh, adjusting the other horn, a little bit of sanding. And, I mean, that could be um, you know, corrected and, and would be worth it if you wanted to do that. But um, that's it as far as imperfections or any, you know, um, damage at all on this set. It's just remarkable. Here's another one of the goats. And there's the one reaching back. You know, it's very typical that uh, they'll have a certain number of the animals reaching back, either turning around or trying to scratch themselves or something. Beautiful goat horns, the beard, everything, just a quintessential goat form. And notice the legs, you know, that's what really shows in these fine carvings is that even the legs are, are formed and narrowed and just made to be just like the animal that they represent. Another goat. Yeah. Those are the pawns. Now let's uh, look at the, all of them together. And make a beautiful lineup. There they are. The reddish uh, material in the back, and then the brown in the front. A true quintessential pastoral Mongolian set. I don't often carry sets that are too precious to play with. You know, I really uh, like to advocate using and playing with sets. But this set is absolutely a work of art and um, will be appreciated by collectors who get the best from the, around the world. The king here is just around two inches tall, although, uh, as you can see, the pieces are small in general. It's a very small, perfectly fine set. Prices are listed below on the YouTube page. Send inquiries to ancientchess at mail.com.